Hi everyone, today we'll be answering potential Java interview questions related to exceptions. So without further ado, let's get started with the first one. Can you describe top three levels of exception hierarchy? Starting at the top, as you might have already noticed, we have an object class. And immediately below that is the throwable class. Only objects of throwable class can be thrown and caught. On the next level, we have error and exception classes. Out of memory error and stack overflow error are one of well known types that are derived from the error class. On the other side, we have runtime exception as one of the best known types of the exception class. Is throwable an interface or a class? Even though name throwable could mislead you into thinking that it is an interface, engineers that developed the exception handling mechanism thought that it is a better idea to use classes as they have a certain state and as such are more appropriate than interfaces. Which methods from the exception hierarchy are most commonly used? If you would decompile first few levels of the exception class hierarchy, you would notice that only throwable has some method definitions. Other classes only have overloaded constructors. Here we mentioned a few of those methods. Print stack trace locks the full call stack of where the exception has occurred. Get message and get localized message return the text message that has been provided during the creation of an exception. What are the well-known keywords used for exception handling? In this example, we see some of the keywords and how they are used. We have try, catch, finally, throws, and throw. Try block is a specific block in Java from which checked exceptions could be thrown and handled by an associating catch block. Finally block always gets executed whether exception happens or not. We will be explaining the usage of throw and throws in the next question. What is the difference between the throw and throws keyword in Java? Throws is being used as part of the method declaration to tell the compiler that the method can be thrown and uh, that it can throw either a concrete type of an exception or its subclasses. In this example, method function can throw an object of the IO exception class or file not found exception class, which is a subclass of IO exception. If we would not add a throws keyword, we would get a compile time error as we have shown for the function without throws method. Bear in mind that throws clause is not part of the method signature. Throw keyword is used to explicitly raise an exception. We can explicitly throw either checked or unchecked exceptions in Java. The throw keyword is mainly used to raise user defined exceptions. What is the difference between checked and unchecked exceptions in Java? Checked exceptions need to be either declared after the throws keyword or surrounded by a try block. Java compiler has the ability to recognize absence of either throws declaration or try block because of which these exceptions got the checked name. Unlike checked exceptions, unchecked exceptions don't need to be handled or declared after the throws clause in the method. Let's look at the display diagram. You can see that all runtime exceptions and errors as well as their subclasses are unchecked. All other classes in the hierarchy belong to checked exceptions. In this example, we have shown that without adding the file not found exception after the throws keyword, we get a compile time error for method function tree. We have added this checked exception in the method function which is why that one doesn't report any errors. We also see that we can surround creation of file reader object with a try catch block as we did in function two. This example will throw null pointer exception, which is an unchecked 
exception, but Java could not have foreseen this in the compile time, which is why we haven't got any errors reported. What is the difference between final, finally, and finalized in Java? Final and finally are keywords in Java, whereas finalized is a method. We have already mentioned finally when we described well-known keywords used for exception handling. If you want to know more about final and finalize, we have separate videos on these two. Links to them are currently being displayed at the top right corner. What happens when a thrown exception is not handled anywhere in the code? In such occasions, JVM will terminate the program and print the exception message along with the full call stack in the console output as we have shown in the example. What happens if an exception is being thrown from a static initialization block? Static initialization block is like a constructor for static fields. It is being executed at the time of class loading. Because of this, it has to be successfully executed every time. As we see in the example, second static block reports a compile error, and the only way to resolve this is to surround it with a try-catch block. We cannot add a throws keyword to the static initialization block. As for the unchecked exceptions, there is no way for Java to know that they might occur in advance, so it can be executed, and once it fails, it will print the exception message and the call stack in the console output. Can we have an empty catch block? Theoretically, we can have an empty catch block, and as you can see, we will not get any errors reported by Java. However, this is a well-known example of bad programming because we should tend to at least log some message or potentially call stack because it would make debugging a lot easier if we ever hit this exception. Can we retro same exception multiple times? This is one more example of bad programming and although we can do it, we should try to avoid it. Reason for that is because we would need to add that retrone exception in the draws clause and we have a complex project with lots of calls that could require some wider architectural changes. Can we use try without catch? Short answer to this question is yes. Try cannot go by itself. It either has to have an associating catch or finally block or both of them. You probably thought that this is yet another example of bad programming. Well, not really. There are scenarios where this makes perfectly sense. However, if you don't catch checked exception, you would need to add it to the trials clause in the meta declaration. And as we have said in one of the previous questions, finally block will mostly be used to close some open resources. What are the constraints for overridden methods when it comes to exception handling? In the next few slides, we will go through different scenarios of exception handling in overridden methods. Starting with the first one, we see that an overridden method can declare an unchecked exception in the throws clause, even though it has not been declared in the superclass. On the next one, we see that this rule does not apply for the checked exception. When superclass method declares an exception, overridden methods can declare same exceptions or their subclasses like we did here for IO exception and file not found exception. Lastly, overridden methods can be without the draws clause even if the method in the superclass has one. What is multi catch block? Prior to Java 7, this is how you would need to write this try catch blocks. We see that both catch blocks have the same code, which kind of makes this method redundant. The way this has been solved in Java 7 is by using the multi catch block 
where we can define various exception types for a single catch block. Here, we have the same method behavior, only written in a nicer way. To separate these exceptions, we use the pipe character, as you can see for null pointer exception and arithmetic exception. What is try with resources? Another neat feature of Java 7 is try with resources, which allows automatically closing any open resources by creating that object along the try keyword. That open resource can only be used inside of a try catch block. Bear in mind that only classes that implement auto closable interface can be created this way. Let's have a look at how the same behavior would look like before Java 7. We clearly see that we need to explicitly close the file reader, which is something that developers tend to forget, which makes try with resources a very useful tool. What will be returned when executing this code? As we have already said, finally block will always get executed at the end of the try block. So return and finally block will override all return statements elsewhere. Hence, output in this case would be number two. Will finally block be executed in this example? Answer to this question is yes. As we mentioned before, finally block will be executed with whether exception has been raised or not. Only scenarios where it won't get executed is when we call system.exit inside of a try block or we forcefully terminate the application. Is there a problem in this example? Java will report a compile time error because types in multi catch block must be disjoint, meaning that they must not be in a parent child relationship as file not found exception and IO exception are. There are two ways to resolve this problem. One of them is to only catch the IO exception. Here is the second way to resolve this, right? Well, not exactly. This would also report a compile time error. But why? Ordering of the catch blocks has to enforce that first we have all subclasses followed by their superclasses. Are there any problems with this example? Exception objects caught in multi-catch block cannot be reassigned because they are implicitly final. Reason for this is because there is no way for Java compiler to resolve which type of exception to use when reassigning the value. Bear in mind that in unicatch block this is totally fine. Thanks for watching this video. If you liked it and you would like to see more content of this type, please click the subscribe button and turn on the notification bell. If you have any questions, post them in the comment section below and we will try to respond as soon as possible. Till next time, goodbye.